Hello, Culture Matters Podcast. I'm so excited to introduce you to our guest. But before I do that, here's a quote I picked for this episode that may potentially kill the mood. <laughs> Here it is. I am become death, the shatterer of worlds. Robert Oppenheimer. My dear friend, Michael Alasso is back. Episode 143, Oper- Obstacles and the Opportunities. The recent Culture Matters podcast. If you haven't listened to that episode, go over there after this one, be a different conversation. I mean, gosh, how do I do this introduction? I mean, one in a million, a teacher, mentor, advisor, acclaimed speaker to both uh, business professionals and, you know, in the theatrical space, producer, I believe director and actor. There's so much more, but good friend, good person, heart, head, and groin. Welcome, my friend, back to the Culture Matters podcast. We already have a bump before he popped in here. Thanks for coming on. One podcast host says nothing at all. Another one chatters and chatters. But no one in the world like Jay Duran, because he knows culture matters. Cause he knows culture matters. Hello to Jay Duran and Jay Duran people. Can you tell I was in Nashville, Louisville, and Denver this week? So, Jay, when you're driving around, uh, I, instead of listening to books, which I should be doing, I know you would tell me that's what I should be doing. I like to channel surf on the radio of that city because when you live in New England, you don't have a lot of country stations and you don't have a lot of Jesus stations in the whole rest of the world or the rest of our country, I should say you do. So I start listening to country tunes, which I don't usually do back here up, up here on the Atlantic Ocean mm. in Southern Maine, <laughs> you know? Um, and so I got country spirit in my blood and your introduction was so warm and wonderful. Thank you. It's great to be here. And I'm glad you talked about head, heart and groin. Because I tried to put a little of all of those in that little song I just did. What? What? Now, I, I, this is this quote I shared. I am first of all, I, I don't understand the grammar, but Oppenheimer. This this movie. I was thinking about you before this. We even you know chatted before the show, and then you were teaching me some things on head, heart, and groin. We can unpack Oppenheimer, right? He said, "I am become death, the shatterer of worlds." Is that head, heart, or groin? Or an admixture, or am I just? It's head and groin. It's head and groin, and I agree that the the non conventional grammar. So I wrote it down when you said it, and for your audience, Jay didn't tell me he was saying that beforehand, which I love because I get to respond honestly when when he hears it, when he says it to me. I am become death is like what kind of weird ass grammar is that? So that appeals to our intellect. So our head right away responds to that. Sh- shattering your world is 100% groin. So it, here's the thing why, when you said the quote, I wrote it down and I said, I want to read this more. And of course, you know, more of our audience is going to see Barbie than Oppenheimer, Jay, but that's okay. <laughs> um, there's yeah, there's together. lessons on both sides, right? There's <laughs> lessons on both sides. It's the, it's the see, and see the, the Barbie Heimer thing, even though, yeah, it's it's commercial marketing. It is for me. It was kind of fascinating because it it happened organically. That wasn't something that was predicted. You know, they, in fact, what was predicted, Jay, is they thought the two movies would compete with each other, and that they would be duking it out. Instead, they bonded. Now, double the amount of people have gone to see Barbie that have gone to see Oppenheimer, which is yeah, that's to be expected in the middle of the summer. And yet, what a weird incongruity that they bonded to create this one idea. And that's what I think this quote does. See, shattering the world is incongruous. So one of my pet peeves is the the way we deify the word consistency. So Jay, you you probably heard it too, you know, uh, oh, he's very consistent. And that's like a positive thing. All right, for me, consistency is positive when it comes to morality, ethics, punctuality. Okay, fine. For those things, for what you and I are doing with our lives, for how we show up every day as a living, breathing, creative 
person who wants to make a difference in God's world? What is consistency equal, Jay? What would be a synonym for consistency? If I said your podcast is consistent, yes, stagnation, boring. So in theater, what we say the opposite of consistency is, and you see why I love this quote, is to shatter expectations. So whenever I'm coaching someone wow. on a presentation, like, so my clients after you today are one person's working on a big keynote that she's doing. What our theme has been is for her to shatter expectations. Everyone, and she's doing it for her company for a big annual event. Everyone knows who she is. They know what she usually does. Who wants to hear that? Shatter expectations. That's, so, and that's groiny to shatter expectations. Why? That I'm in your face. Oh, yeah. Why? What? What is the? Can we start defining terms? We can use these tools to beat each other over the head. Love it. So we oversimplify in theater to make things clear. So and and then of course that creates depth when you when you bring it down to the cleanest, clearest terms. So head communicators communicate via data, logic, facts. They're uh, concise. They're precise. They're non-emotional, Jay. They're non-confrontational. They're data-based. Uh, these are people like um, Bill Belichick. These are people like any of the Fed chairs we've had over the last three decades, Yellen, Greenspan, uh, Bernanke. Uh, these are every secretary of state we've ever had, Jay. Uh, think about uh, from Henry Kissinger to Rex Tillerson to Hillary Rodham Clinton, when she was Secretary of State, Condoleezza Rice, John Kerry, these people are all head communicators. They come from the six o'clock news anchors, not cable news, but the local news anchors. I know you guys in the Midwest, it's the five o'clock news, but that's not real. That's fake. It's one hour behind. It's the <laughs> six o'clock news. So it's those people all have heart people, heart communicators. And don't let me say heart people, because the mistake we make is that this is who the person is as Ooh, a human that's being. That's powerful. We got to unpack that too. I, you know, and right. I make that mistake all the time. No, no, no. There are lots of head communicators who are deeply harder. Kierkegaard, if you label me, you negate me. Oh, that's perfect, Jay. Ah. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And so don't let me do that. Heart communicators, people who use heart okay. to communicate, are deeply empathetic. Jay, they're even sympathetic. Like, I'm so concerned that I show up and do the podcast well for you mm. and that I watch your face. And is he nodding when I say that or is he disapproving? So uh, we, sensitive wow. too. heart communicators, are very sensitive. Their feelings can be hurt. Now, Jay, we, we both know that the whole universe says head and heart pretty easily without any theater background whatsoever. What theater people know, I think what our leg up is, is that we know there's a third zone and the third zone is growing. So there are many communicators who are neither head nor heart, and they're growing communicators. And their special sauce is uh, direct. So they're, one, they're perceived as the most authentic because they're in your face, they're direct, no frou-frou. Um, I like your shirt, I hate your hair. You're nice, you're stupid, I love you, I hate you. They just say what they want. And so they're often perceived as the most authentic of the three communicators, and they're often perceived as the least tactful, as the least uh, respectful of other people. So there's pro and con. Authenticity is the most important thing for me. So you would say, well, the groins are the best. Well, they're also often perceived as unkind. So you see the trap here is to say that one mm. of the three is the best. No, no, no. When we talk about leadership, when we talk about communication, when we talk about you and me, that we have to be all three, that we all lead with one, and so the quote that you started with, I definitely saw the head, I definitely saw the groin, I, I couldn't see the heart in the communication right off the bat. So, and don't be fooled by words. Mm. So, Jay, I could say, uh, this is a pen you use it to write. All right, so those are my two sentences. So head, this is a pen, you use it to write. Heart, this is a pen. You use it to write. Groin. This is a pen. You use it to write. So it's not the words. It's the delivery and what you pack behind it. Is any of that resonating for you, Jay? Would you say that, that, that if I'm 
hearing someone, I can, if I'm really listening, I may be able to hear what they're not conveying. And that can lead me to um, lean in. I mean, that's the first thing that comes to mind when, when you share this. Like, yeah, because you're always three steps out. ahead. Yeah, well, it's because you're so smart, dude. It's like you're three steps ahead. Like you've already gone to, to winnowing that down to one more thing. And so what you just talked about, what we talk about in Theater J is called cover. So because you're so perspicacious or so astute about this, is that you already figured out that many people cover. So I coach a lot of CEOs. Hmm. So a lot of CEOs cover with groin. You know, they walk in, I own this place, blah, blah, blah. and underneath what awesome. they're covering is heart. And so someone like you has the perspicacity to see that and understand them, but the average citizen doesn't. But before this show, he hit record, you, you gave me feedback, which I think is already... You said, head, I can go there, heart, not you haven't seen groin. That's because I'm afraid. Because my groin, <laughs> not that, well, thanks for joining the Culture Matters <laughs> podcast. It's time to go. Know, some people won't the, call it groin because of what you just did. I love they'll it. Call it no, well, they'll call it grit or whatever. Well, call it I would argue, you want. Let's not avoid <laughs> through language. We've done enough of that. Let's reveal <laughs> through language. Go in that. Let's go in the hole and pull out whatever's in there, the rabbit or whatever. The 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 uh, the the I've been I've been hurt from emotionally, physically, everything, like from the groin. I've been hurt. So I, I think your analysis, your observation of that is not only accurate, it's helpful. Um, and that's just what's come to mind, you know, in, the, in this dialogue. It's like, okay, yes, that, that, that's helpful. So you've gone to the why, which is really excellent. And when you get to the why, then you might be able to I, I, let me ask you this. Here, this is where this came up. When you said couple steps ahead, if I go a couple steps ahead and my intention's pure, I may, it's like a gorilla or a bear hugging a person it loves that's 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 taking care of it since since adolescence. Yeah. It just kills the person. Perfect. That's how I've always viewed like, or reflected. Perfect. How did I get here, right? How did I get here where I have to go all the way around the mountain to get someone to where you know, I would have liked them to be from a, from a, from a loving place so that they wouldn't hurt me. Right. I, uh, you're so self-aware, Jay. Jay, let me ask you this. If you were walking down the streets of Austin, Texas with Jenna and someone tried to attack Jenna, yeah. would you kick into head, heart, or groin? Well, uh, well, it's hard. I don't want to lie to myself. I don't right. know. I've been in that situation. I, I'd like to say that I'd be able, I'd, I'd like to say to them, hey, I'm Jay. What's your name? And then they'd Interesting. stop. Interesting. I'd like to be, I'd like to be the person, meaning, meaning I live my life in a way that like, I think about this often, not specifically that scenario, but if someone was coming to mug me and you, and me, you know, anybody, just me, they're going to attack me. That just by looking at them, they'd wake up out of whatever that was. So <laughs> maybe I'm not answering the question, but. so Yes, two, you are. Uh, oh, you're being so good. Well, then, all right, I'm going to, let's go, let's go. Old and like, guy is history. that heart or is that groin or is that, because I think it's. What you just said was them. head. What you just said was head. So do you know who Kitty Genovese is, Jay? No, then write it down. All right. So Kitty Genovese, for your audience, unless they're a boomer, the name probably isn't going to resonate. For boomers, it like a tune right in your face. Because I forget what decade it was. It's either 60s, 70s, or 80s. That's not important. What's important is that this young woman in New York, businesswoman, came home from work one day, and she lived in one of those kind of apartment complexes where the apartment complexes had multiple buildings that looked out onto an atrium. And as she's walking into this atrium, 
she's attacked. She's attacked by this guy who really goes at her and she fights. She fights for her life. And then, and, and, and from what I hear, she got away once and then he got her again and he brutalized her and murdered her. The sad part of the story, Jay, is that that's not the sad part of the story. What they found out later, and songs have been written about this, is that no fewer than two dozen people were looking out their window and watched the whole thing and did nothing. Now, my fear is, Jay, wow. and I don't mean this to be hard on you, is that they were saying, well, maybe I could talk to the guy and like um, by looking at him and saying, what are you doing? And that might help. But they did kick into head. They said nothing. They probably assumed that this was a mm. boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever assumption they made. Jay, what should they have kicked into? Head, heart, or groin. What would have been the most effective to well, achieve? Well, it depends what plane of existence we're talking. Like, <laughs> right on. Right. Like, if I kill the guy, I'm going to have to also live with it. That's right. So now I'm making this like paradoxical choice of save my own self. So you go to head. See, this is my point about you. Look how beautifully you go to head. Uh, that was, thank you. Thank you for helping everyone understand. You go completely to head. See, that's where if I were your coach, brother. I'd say, let's get that groin out. Well, you are, you are. So what do we do? So Wear here's the thing. Pants. <laughs> that's where the comedy comes in. Way to hide. Comedy reveals truths. See, that was right. pretty groiny, though. See, I'm going to oh, take back I what I said. Yeah, that was pretty groiny. I, I don't usually see you do what you just did there. <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do? Pull down my pants? Like, Wah. that's groiny. That was pretty cool. <laughs> no, I said, wear tight. I said, wear tighter pants. I wear tighter pants. Thank you. <laughs> that's even better. Yeah, you're, oh, you're. I need to have more fun in my life. That's what I need to do. Jeez. Well, see, oh, and that's why I do improv, Jay, because oh. improv by its very nature is groin. So some improv improvisational specialists live in head and they're very good mm -hmm. and they're very wordy and they wordy and they do the verbal acuity superbly. The people who are the best who can go groin, mm -hmm. head, heart. And so obviously this is how do we as humans communicate all three? Because sometimes your brain doesn't come up with a quick punny associative thing when you're doing improv. And sometimes a physical, like, what am I supposed to wear, tighter pants? like like brings down the house and it's not particularly intellectual it's <laughs> it's like it's it's so in the moment and alive and the problem uh, that you so beautifully said was we see so much groin negatively presented mm. like some of the experiences you've had and politicians who use groin to humiliate uh leaders who here's our way i put it when i was more when when i at least in the fact i think there was a level of my straightforwardness that I feel as though I've lost in the pursuit of, in the reaction of how I was related to, having related to others in the past, the way that I was showing up. And maybe like, it's like how I get to the outcome is, is a bit slower than I'd like. Cause I hurt, it feels like I hurt, I must've hurt people if they, if, if, if they hurt me. Like meaning, I, my intentions can be so pure to help, but if what I say to the to, to somebody, like, it just goes to the core of who they are, and yeah. that, that occurs, uh, you know, that's in essence undergirding the the the, the 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 you know the the essence of whether it's the advisor or the consultant. But the frame is different than if I'm sitting at a at a bar talking to you know a friend, or maybe a potential friend, and like what now their whole existence just is kind of stripped from them. Why did I have to do that? Yeah. And so I've, I've gotten myself into those scenarios throughout my, my and stay. It's beautiful. Here. It's why we love you. And so it's never a subtraction. So, and as I listened to you say that paragraph, it was so head and heart back and forth between head and heart an intellectual pursuit and caring about feelings, caring about how you're going to be received. And that's how I see you. This beautiful man going back and forth between head and heart. What I noticed in that moment where I said you went to groin, you were actually funnier, you were spontaneous, 
There was no premeditation. Groin is often uh, devoid of premeditation. Groin okay, is here we go. So I've, been, I've been hiding through that my head and heart for a while, for some time um, because of the ramifications of my, the groin. Clearly, clearly. And, you know, that's starting to become not only boring, you know, but uh, me, um, it's, it's, you know, you know, I know that I'm not being authentic. Jay, is it because you received groin from another communicator that was hurtful or you behaved in a groin way? I think it's both. Somebody else, both, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I've, I'm going to see, uh, um, and one of my enemies in the next uh, month and a half. And, you know, I'm going to go see them and see how they're doing and wow. ask them how they're doing. And I'm going to listen to them for the first time. Cause part of the reason they're my enemy is because I love them, but I didn't listen. So like what happened between us, you know, I mean, I didn't like that J as much as I like this J either. So we at least have that common grounding is how I'm looking at it. So, so, so it's both. I, 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 I you know, <laughs> that's where I'm at in the whole thing. But I'm definitely repressing my groin and I appreciate the, act, the acknowledgement. And the, the, the Culture Matters podcast should know that I have a groin. <laughs> <laughs> you bring my creativity out of me. And then, so now I want to like segue to um, why is creativity so vital? And I'll just, you know, question mark because I don't want to limit it to business. Yes. Although we talk about business in this, sh in the show, clearly, right? People, right? Culture. But why is creativity so important? And, and if you have feedback on what I said before that, just please take the floor. Well, my, my feedback of what you said before it was it was a gorgeous paragraph of heart. That delicious visit to your enemy and the way you presented it was so dominant heart. It's why I fell in love with you when I met you. It's that. So uh, uh, we don't need to rehash. My first meeting with you uh, was all the head that I received first. And so I didn't fall in love with you immediately. I was more intrigued by you like what is he what is that who is he cool head I'm, I'm interested wasn't in love yet but i was interested and sometimes that's better than being in love then as soon as i had the chance to be with you where we weren't uh on display helping other yeah. people together where it was about you and me having a conversation that's when i realize what a dominant heart communicator and person you are. And so that that was the appeal to me with the combination of the head. And so so that's my comment about that. And it but the segue was actually quite not contrived at all. Um, you know, this may help you. One of my favorite people on God's earth that's left us, and I never met him, I never worked with him. He would have been his 71st birthday last week. Oh. And it's Mr. Robin Williams. When you oh. think of how, I don't know about your life, Jay, but Robin Williams like impacted my life in so many ways. All the roles he played throughout his and watched. And people would often say to me, you look like Robin Williams. You remind me of Robin Williams. And that would like, I'd almost cry. That would make Amazing me feel compliment. so good. Amazing compliment. And so he said this cool thing, Jay, where he said, you're only given one little spark of madness you mustn't lose it so why is creativity so important is it's this thing we're given that if we don't exercise it it's gone and then we've left and we've never used this thing what i see every day are a lot of people saying woulda coulda shoulda as the clock ticks and the beauty of creativity is it's present tense. It's right now. So much of our life is past tense. Um, both, And I, thank you for making it both personal and business, because one without the other is kind of... Hell. Uh, yeah, right. It's because you and I, I think, agree on this, is that work-life balance, what a stupid-ass comment that is. It's like this, it should be this, this holistic, this organic person that we are, that we bring to the universe in our work life and our personal life, and our personal life invites the work life and our work life invites the personal. They, they shouldn't be 
put on a scale and I'm going to mm. weigh out and only give Jay this much because is this a work podcast or a personal podcast? I need to know. Stop it. And so creativity allows that impulsive, intuitive, connective spirit to come out. And it is the most present tense of, of all the qualities. When I make a list of all the skills actors have, that creativity piece is present tense. We need to stop living in past tense. Stop living in future. Well, I can't do that because I need to save for when I'm 95 years old. All right, I get ahead of that. I'm not, I don't mean to vilify that, but we should never do that at the expense of living in the present tense. The, the actor that's on tapping into that uh, presence, is that what connects below awareness with the uh, Yes, audience? sir. See, it's not a coincidence, etymologically speaking, that presence and present tense, huh. like again, there's your perspicacity. You, you figure that out. The average citizen doesn't think about that. But that's what present tense is. It's about presence. I'm with you right now. I'm not worrying. Oh, is that thing I said earlier to Jay stupid? Should I have said that differently? <gasps> After Jay, I've got to be ready and have this in place, right? We need to do preparation for our day. But now I need to live with Jay. I need to be present tense with Jay. And by the way, uh, let me just publicly tell your listening audience this. Of all, you know, I don't want to offend the other podcasts I do, but your, your style is completely different from everybody else's. So what you do is like right on this bridge of preparation. So you don't, we don't go over this two weeks before. We don't have an outline. But nor do I turn on the thing and now we're going. So somewhere in the middle is what you do. And I, it's like, I didn't realize that till today because I thought I didn't, you know, because it's my second one now. So if you repeat something, I'm assuming, oh, this is what Jay does. So what <laughs> listening audience, what, what Mr. Duran does is he meets with you for a little bit. He trusts you. He believes in you. And then he meets you for about 15 minutes. You free associate talk. He has little ahas that says, yeah, that's what we should talk about today. And then away you go. And if you're a good speaker, if you believe in what you're talking about, you shouldn't need more preparation than that in, in, in order to make the in order to make the, the conversation more groiny is the irony. So it would be for Mr. Head Guy, I don't get any outline ahead of time. I don't get these are the core values of my culture matters part. You trust that we know that that's why I'm here. You've already mm. put me through the colander and, you know, I didn't go through. I, I made it. I'm a piece of pasta and you, you saved me. And so here we are. And that's what creativity is. It's all in that immediate moment. And in order to have creativity, you have to be confident. You have to believe you can be in the moment and you have to be willing to fail. You have, and see Robin Williams, he wasn't afraid to fail. And so he was courageous. Now he was sad. He had personal things. I wish I could have met him. I wish I could have helped him. I wish I could have been with him to hold him. But I don't, he had his own demons, um, but he would have been 71 last week. Look how young, 71. It's like a kid. Is, is that part of your driving force to be a teacher, to find people that, I mean, because you, you speak in front of the creative people, people that start organizations that are responsible for these creations that they start or are part of that starting. Is it, you know, finding the, 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 the good or uh, not the good finding that whatever that is, maybe it's ineffable and cultivating and curating it. Is that a big yeah, remember, for you? Yeah, Jay, remember last time we talked about objectives? Did we talk last time about super objective? So I do not believe you, so. I don't think so, because what what you just landed on is what we call in theater the super objective. So it's why God put me on the earth. So my objective today is to make sure your listeners leave with a couple of ideas of how they can upgrade, how they show up every day in their business and personal life. And so that's, that's my objective, what I immediate, my desired result for this podcast. My super objective is why I move through space every single day. It's what I want on my tombstone. So my super objective, Jay, and I'm sure you've probably guessed this by now, if I haven't told you before, is I want every human being I meet to be better because they met me. And that's why I talk to the Uber driver. That's why I do meet people in the airport. 
That's why I do comment on the barista at Starbucks's glasses is that I want to leave the world a better place. I want each human being and I, and I don't want to do it. Is there a Michael world. also in another universe? Yeah. Wants everyone to hate him or have a meeting. No, no, no. Wants everyone to be worse off for having met him. Right. It's somewhat sure. simplistic. Like you, I love what you just asked because like groin, well, shouldn't that be, should, shouldn't that be every, that was very groiny, very groiny. Shouldn't everyone super objective be what mine is? So that's, no, no. No, like, you know, imagine there is a, there's a, there's an alternate universe where there's another Alasso that their super objective is everyone that was worse off. Write it. It so it's, a, it's a dystopian novel by Jay Durant. <laughs> I, I just think, you know, you, you're, you're, you already have taught me things. Like I, I need to explore my creativity more and just be more open. Yeah. Like, see on this platform. Yeah, I, I, and I think you'd be so bloody good at it. Be, be, see, it's the mistake we make, Jay, when we coach is, I don't think coaching should ever be about subtraction. Okay, mm. yeah, things like filler words, sure. Um, mm. Don't be mean to, sure, okay, we can subtract that. But by and large, I think of coaching as addition because I love you for who you are. And that's a mistake. Some, some people when they're coach feel like the coach is telling them you're not good enough. Oh, and yeah. and I, I mean, all you got is you. So mm. we start with you. I want you to be you, but that's why I call my program on your best day, you on your best day. So my job is to make sure I give you things to add to the toolbox, not subtract. That super intellectual Jay I love, the, 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 the Jay, that sweet Jay that has so much humility and so much self-exploration and is like such a brilliant hugger I don't want you to lose that. Man, oh, man, I want you to keep that. And I want you to be aware of it. You need to coach people to their strengths. I want you to repeat it with intentionality. I want you to know that when you hug me at the end, after we do a long day of uh, hard coaching of our clients together, and that you give me that hug at the end of the day, it matters. You know, that really matters. It's that little bit like, wow, Jay saw me today. He appreciated me today. So don't delete that add add and so i'd like you to add that cool i, I want you to be an improv star that's what i want you to be I you know when i used to speak I, I really got off on the improvisation i i never gave the same talk twice it was always based on something that i had written and you know as i as we as blah so that's what i used to do so, <laughs> well, yeah, because the rationalization starts setting in the materialism, the deconstruction and the commoditization of whatever the marketplace has prescribed the value to whatever I represent was about to say all this bullshit. So blah, but that's what I used to do. And God, I, I, uh, I, I was, I was, I felt good at what I, whatever it was that I was doing, um, it came very naturally to me and it led to, it led to, you know, I, I believe it was EP that saw me do a talk at not rep all those years ago. And that's, you know, originally started falling. So, so there's fruit from that, from that. Wow. Um, but I, I, with that, I, I've been in a season where, um, yeah, I've been trying to add certain things and without awareness, taking things off. Um, and, and now I'm in a season of integrating. And I think even our friendship, Mentor, mentee, relationship, kinship is a fruit, a symptomatic fruit of that in a sense. Like I had to be ready to even invite um, you on the show, period. And then another level, invite you back. And there's this, this family that's been coming on the show, I mean, me, you know, recurring guests, like my people, right? Culture, right? I want to love be that. People. You were rec repeat coming to you back. And exploring this, this, this process together. Cause like, right. You know, why am I doing this? What, what really, we were talking before, like the irony of a podcasting is so inauthentic. Like this, I, I just want to be the same person when the thing is on, when it's off and when it's on, it's like, I'm fighting the forces of the forces for just that to happen. Brilliant. You're playing the obstacle as we discussed last time. 
And that's what I learned. People, almost every question someone asks me, Jay, like, well, I have an employee who does this and how should I do that? It's always about objective and don't play the obstacle. The obstacle is the employee pisses you off when they do that. So you play the obstacle and think that's authentic. Play the objective. And so it's what, what do you want? And so if I want you, Jay Duran, to be better because of our friendship, the obstacles, I have to figure out how to turn them into opportunities. I want to play my objective. That's the only definition of authenticity. It's not my back hurts. It's not, ah, I didn't get enough sleep last night, Jay, so don't expect me to be articulate today. Uh, those are authentic obstacles. Mm. You need to play the authentic objective. Is it to be clear on where you're going and make sure you're integrated along the way in a sense? or That you and I are too. Because my objective may be, a, I okay. want to make you a great speaker today. Well, that's not what you want to do with your audience. So I got to be sensitive about your objective too. Mm. So it's not, it can't be a monologue. It can't be Michael's object. So if I want to make every human being in the world better, I've got to diversify my tactical portfolio to do that. Because you might say, I don't want to be better today, Michael. And quick example, Jay, th this has been a real theme this week. I'm noticing with Peggy, my wife, is that I don't want the cobbler's son to go barefoot. You know that stupid ass metaphor? So every time Peggy presents me with problems, which she pretty much always does, um, you know what my knee jerk feeling is to do, solve them. Sure, yes. I'm so good at this. Guess what, Jay? She doesn't want me to solve them nine out of 10 times. She just wants me to shut up and listen. And I gotta do better with that. I got, so it's my objective is to make Peggy better. Well, how am I going to make Peggy better? Maybe by listening once in a while and let her say all her woes and say, I'm sorry, I love you. Let me give you a hug. Mm -hmm. And maybe that seems stupid ass, but that's what she wants. So I have to get over myself and think about what she needs at the same time that I play my objective. Is that example too far-fetched from where we're going? Do you I, I don't know. I, I can't get the benefit of Jenna helping me if I'm helping her. That's right. That's and, you know, right. Your, your level of awareness around this and, and courage to share it makes this conversation 10,000 times more useful to not only me, thank you, by the way, and, and us here, but like the listeners, if we don't think our partners in life make us better, like, yeah, and I'm even, kind, I'm even aware of it. You know what, I, I just, I didn't post this yet on threads, but I'm, I'm gonna post this. I wasn't sure if the grammar was good enough. And if I don't know, I'll text it to Jenna because she's like my editor with everything. <laughs> yeah. She's taught me how to write and stuff, uh, like <laughs> grammar wise. But I, I thought of this the other day. I want to share it with you because maybe you could you could tell me. I, I uh, Where is it? If I, uh, this is the one thing with the too many thoughts. It was, well, it'd be helpful if I could find it. it but it alludes to this. Well, the audience will just have to. Here it is. Here it is. I am aware of many of my faults, but that doesn't mean I have the courage to do anything about them. Oh. Like I thought of this because it's true about me. And is that good enough to post? Because I, I wasn't sure if it was like, I am it aware is. of many of yeah. my faults, but that doesn't mean I have the courage to do anything about them. I've been posting on threads every day. It's a goal of mine for hundred days to post on this thing. Wow. And some days I'll post a lot. Some days I did a little less, but I'll, I'll just post everything that I can. But I, I'm aware of many of my uh, faults, but that doesn't mean I have the courage to do anything about them. I think what you just shared with Peggy, it's like, no, my partner makes me do something about them. That's one thing. Yeah, I I, I love the I love the quote. Um, and I always say self-awareness is half the battle, Jay. So because you are aware of that, I think you're going to be better at it. And as soon as I became aware that Peggy did not want me to fix everything, the awareness alone makes me better. Now I still fail. I still, like it happened this morning. 
you know, because we're having 40 people um, Sunday morning for brunch. Holy cow. At, well, we're doing a singing brunch. We're having all our singing friends over. And so we have lots of musicians coming. So it's all people Holy. who like to sing. It's just going to be joyous and wonderful. But of course, you know, she, I've been on the road. She's planning it. And so then she asks me my opinion of things and wants my input. It's not true. She's not, all she's wanting is for me to say, yeah, that sounds great. So when I come up with a good idea about where to put the punch bowl that is different from hers, she's really not interested in it. Now that makes Peggy sound like, oh, she, no, but she, all she's looking for from me is support for her creativity. Mm. And so I got to be careful that I do learn from Peggy every day. What's a point of confidence if you don't have humility? And so I'm learning from her how to be a better partner. How to, and it really translates to every aspect of my life. She makes me better. Um, and she does it in a gentle, kind way, in a very clear way, even though sometimes it's, she says one thing and she means another. That helps me how to be better. How important is it for the, the, I mean, do you see a connection between our awareness around this dialogue of a life partner and the general partnerships that are a constant in business culture? Indeed, I do. It's, it's metaphoric, certainly, because, you know, I hear a lot of CEOs talk about their, their work wife, you know, and they use that, that language freely. Yes. And it, it makes sense because we do f form these partnerships in the workplace. And it is the same thing. And if we have status, if we have authority, if we're, you know, I'm the one who's the speaker and the self-awareness expert, doesn't make me necessarily better than Peggy at those topics. It depends, it's situational. And I should be wanting to get better every day. And mm. if I'm not wanting to get better, am I really a good self-awareness expert? If I'm not on the quest to get better at this? Well, one can be a one, this is in the defense of all martyrs. If my if I benefit from someone else's purgatory, I mean I still benefit. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, that's we've all your best met quote of the day. <laughs> right? We've all met demagogues, right? Like, 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 like the message, the message, right? The medium and the mess, the medium is the message or, or whatnot. Um I what I love, what I respect about you, it, and I and I think it it presupposes these types of authentic conversations um is the courage to look to look back when like when we're facing the crowd we're only looking forward it, it's not like we're looking through their eyes to us and it is a struggle it's been a struggle for me to look to to instantiate my own lessons in my behavior as i garnered power from these mediums like the show and the the stage and to you know we've been in settings together where we're in a position of authority and I'm um um and you you actually gave me some really great feedback candor that led to awareness around uh how I was physically and it was below awareness I was physically representing myself in the medium and I believe it was just because I was, uh, you know, I was, I was, na I was acclimating to the medium in a way mm. that, yeah, yeah. I, my physical posture was a representation of some of the inner contradictions. And um, I, I'm going to digress on that for a second and ask you a question <laughs> about reality for, for a second here so that this, so that, yeah, so that I can avoid the, the conflict. Um <laughs> You have 10 tips of creativity. We should probably go through them one by one as we close because we have two minutes left in the <laughs> Culture Matters podcast. Well, why do we do a tease? Like if it's about creativity, um, I told you, here's, you know, Part one two. of them Part is three. if you, if you have a, right, if you have a dog, I think you should walk your dog alone every now and then. Because when I walk Bridie alone, I am I, my creative juices flow. The joy of walking through the neighborhood or along mm. the beach or on a little rocky road, wherever it is, 
Um, and meeting the squirrels, meeting the chipmunks, the deer, this morning a deer just darted in front of us. There's always something that is gonna germinate to a creative idea. And let's, so let's go the other extreme. Do you know I'm a list maker? Oh, no. It's like, I love making lists. Now that sounds so heady and, and good for me, at least I have some head in there, um, that I, I find making lists makes me more creative. Like when I, when I, I asked myself, what, what do you think is creativity? And I said, make a list. So in theater, we say structure frees creativity. So mm -hmm. I like little mini structures. So I like lists. I enjoy lists. It makes me more creative. And one more, let's tease them with this last one. What I learned this week, I learned something new every week, Jay, is that, and that like one CEO just said that I'm afraid to go the full energy the way you do. I'm afraid to put my foot on the gas pedal all the way. Seems like you do that all the time, which was both nice feedback and I felt good. And at the same time, I had to think about, do I do it too much? You know, I need to find my differentiations of energy. So when I got that feedback, it made me better because I'm. it was early in the meeting mm -hmm. and I was able to make sure I differentiated all different kinds of energy. So I ended with a poem uh, where I use different voice inflections, a lot more pausing because of that feedback. The however is, if it's a however rather than an and, is that if you have that ability to have that energy, test going full throttle sometimes. Test not editing and walking in the room with your highest kind of energy and emanate it out. Don't, don't be chicken. Test it in the backyard if you need to those are some of the things I think about because when you go and you put the gas all the way on the pedal, man, there's a new kind of life. And I said one more, let's end with this. Observe, observe, observe. True creativity, like right above the screen, an airplane went by with a placard. Doesn't usually have, I'm, I'm looking at the Atlantic Ocean and right below it was a soul heron I love herons, Jay. They just stand there like wow. these tall, skinny things. And I'm saying that's creative. It's like the commercialism of an airplane with a placard over this solitary bird who couldn't care less about that advertisement above his head. <laughs> and so I don't know where that's going, but that's going to make me more creative by looking at that. I don't know how I'll use that but that incongruity could come into play somewhere in a creative way.